In book 10 of Classroom of the Elite, we had the special exam class poll because nobody had gotten expelled throughout the school year. So the school decided we needed to expel someone. And the object or the goal of this exam was to take out the weakest link of the class. Well, at least that's what some people thought. Others disagreed, etc. But the people for class D that were nominated for expulsion included Ike, Sudo, Hirata, Koenji, Harikta, um, Kiyotaka, and Yamachi, where Yamachi in the end ended up being expelled. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about was he the right choice or who was the best choice to be expelled in this situation. And I'm going to be looking at the characters, their strengths, their weaknesses, their development, and what they offer to the class. So if you guys enjoy videos like these, then make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you guys never sign a new one. And with that, away, my name is Unleash, and let's see who was the person who should have been expelled during the class poll. The first person we're gonna talk about is Ike. He was a part of the idiot trio with Sudo and Yamachi. They were very disruptive and didn't really offer anything beneficial to the class. I will say his grades were poor and he's still at the bottom of the class. However, he's taken the initiative to study and not do things last minute. So his grades are improving even if it's just by a little bit. Then there's on the island where he ended up being the survival guy knowing how to survive in an, well, I guess the fourth because I believe he was in Boy Scouts and he was able to find drinking water, find a good location, was able to start a fire, etc. And then there's his relationship with Shinohara, where in the beginning that she thought of him as repulsive and now she's starting to like him. I don't know if they're officially going out. Like I said, the only book I'm up to is book 10, but she's starting to, I guess they're starting to talk and not just her but other people are starting to open up to him and starting to see him not only as disruptive but as an actual decent person then the next person we have is Sudo. Sudo by far has probably had one of the best developments for class c where in the beginning that Sudo was always reckless he was always getting into fights i think his first introduction of him we had him getting mad and trying to fight some people already he didn't study he was brains and no bronze and now he studies um he's no longer at the bottom of the class where now i'm not gonna say he's towards the middle but like there's 40 people in the class. I'd say he's like within the 30 to 25 range in terms of test scores. And he even tries to be helpful. He always asks Harikta what he should do. And he tries to be beneficial to the class and no longer be disruptive, um, which is a huge development because Sudo only cared about himself and now he's starting to care about others. Maybe it's because he likes Harikta, I don't know, but he still is trying his best. And in terms of physical abilities, he's probably top three in the class. We don't know um, how strong uh, Kiyotaka and how strong Koenji they are when they go all out but for Sudo to be top three in terms of physicality that's very important as well next up we have Koenji he's kind of interesting because he is like a double-edged sword because of his nonchalant personality Koenji has the ability to be great he just chooses not to be well not to be great and this is because I don't well we really don't know why I guess he thinks that it's a drag or a bother not um, taking stuff seriously but he showcased that he is physically gifted and that he is also exceptionally smart in terms of intelligence I believe he ranks in the top five whenever he does his test and during the zodiac test he ended up figuring out who was within the first couple hours that the exam or the special test it took place and then in terms of physicality he showcased i believe in book eight during the relay race that he was able to run an exceptionally fast rate and even when he was swimming in the beginning he ended up taking first place by a mile uh, by a mile so koenji he can try as like he doesn't try and here's the thing for me i rather have someone with the ability or like a higher ceiling and not hinder the class because if he's like staying where he is it's not necessarily helping the class but isn't hurting it either 
But if he's able to go all out, then I think he benefits the class an exceptional amount. Where in book 10, he said he's finally going to start taking stuff seriously now. Can we really trust him? I don't know. But I think Koenji has a higher ceiling than most people in the class. Then we have Hirata. The only reason why his name was brought up at being expelled is because he was trying to sacrifice himself, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Hirata, he is probably the biggest social network when it comes to the guys. Um, he's very popular with the women in the school. He's also very physically gifted, maybe not on the level of Kiyotaka, Sudo, and Koenji, but he is in the soccer club, so he's decent at that. And he's also smart. I don't want to say he's like top five of the class because there's a lot of people up there. But I'd say he's definitely probably top seven, top ten maybe. Um, so he's definitely up there. But his biggest flaw that he offers to the class is that he thinks with his heart instead of his head. He can't sacrifice others. And I'm not trying to say that you should always put people under the rug to, in order to win. But sometimes you have to make those sacrifices to win. I don't know who said it. I believe it was either Michael Jordan or Kobe. But they said that there's no I in team, but there's an I in win. So sometimes you have to be selfish in order to win for or sacrifice stuff for the greater good. And this leads into the fact that he can't make decisions whenever he's under the pressure or the lights are too bright. He always crumbles where in the recent book, book 10, he's trying to ask Kiyotaka in order uh, to be the new leader because he can't handle it. Harikta's another one that she only got a vote because of her actions, where I believe she did well, the most logical choice. She addressed the elephant in the room. People are going to try to eliminate someone gifted instead of really looking at all the facts. And she took, well, she brought it to light. She's very smart. She has great uh, decisive decision-making skills and she's physically gifted. Look at what she went against Ibuki on the island test. Even when she was not feeling well, she was still able to keep up to her to an extent. Um, and during the sports festival, she was able to race with Ibuki neck and neck where I believe she even passed her in the end. And I could see this girl, I could see Susan A being on the council in the future. I will say her one flaw is how she interacts with others, but she's working on it. It's get, gotten better since the start of the series because at first she believed that in order kind of the opposite of Harata that she doesn't need to rely on others and that she can make it to the top by herself where Kiyotaka, Sudo, and her brother have told her or showcased why she has to rely on others and now she's starting to believe in others starting to gain more allies gain more friends etc and Yana Yakoji now, the reason why he's kind of tricky is because we can't necessarily look at what he does behind the scenes. We can't look at Schema Yakoji because most of the class, I think only like five or six people know his actual true colors inside class C. So we have to look at him from an outside perspective. What does the average type of student in him offer to the class? Um, his grades, they're not the best, they're not the worst. He's in the middle of the pack. In terms of his social network, I'd say it's pretty good. Even without him, like, going behind the scenes, you know, he talks to Ruin. I believe he talks to Sagi Yanaki, and he talks to, um... I think those are the only two he talks to behind the scenes, but on the surface, he talks to some people in the class. He talks to Ichinose, talks to Karuzawa. Well, no, he doesn't, not Karuzawa. He talks to Manabu, he talks to Tachibana, um, he talks to Kasaraki, Ibuki. So he does have a social network outside his class, even without him showcasing who he truly is. And in terms of physicality, uh, during a sports festival, he showed above average grip strength and he showed that he can keep up with his senior in Manabu when they race. So it seems like Kiyotaka from the outside looking in that he has potential if he were to study a little bit more to be better in his studies and his mental. And then in terms of physicality that he's probably in the top half of the board and even the top half of the class. And the man of the hour, we have Yamachi. What does he offer to the class? Well, he didn't try to get smarter. He didn't try to study more. He didn't try to do anything like that. He was always wait till the last minute. So it showcased no improvement of the grades. There's been no improvement of people liking him. He stayed the same, kind of stagnant since the uh, beginning of the series. He hinders the class the most, and even he was a traitor. And it's hard to trust somebody who goes behind your back and doing stuff like this. So 
who was the proper person to be expelled from class C during the class poll? It was Yamachi because he doesn't offer anything or at least he doesn't offer anything beneficial to the class where I'd say probably the next person up would be Ike, but he showcased that he's trying to improve and that he could be beneficial to the class. Now, I think this, um, it was to weed out the least important or the least beneficial, the person who hinders the class the most, but I still didn't like the test. I mean, just because like they did a good job of not being expelled, why should somebody have to be expelled? But it is what it is. I can't wait to read book 11 and I think it comes out, the paper version comes out May 10th. Sometimes I get them like two days or a day before. So I'm really excited for it. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out a new video from me. It's going to turn Snapchat and TikTok on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to unleash your potential.